Well, I hope you enjoyed your long weekend. I sure did. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is May 31st. It's Tuesday, and you're watching On Top and Hot. What do I do here? Well, I like to share my due diligence on OTC stocks and penny stocks that got something going for them, stocks you should be considering. And I found one today. Actually, I didn't find it today. I found it earlier this weekend. And I was putting this information all together, and I see today, boom, it started to move hard. But don't worry, there are still lots of gains to be made with this company. Come on, let me show you what I found. Well, of course, we're over here at the OTCMarkets.com website. Seriously, folks, this is my go-to site whenever I do due diligence on an OTC stock. Simply because FINRA and the SEC update this site for all the OTC stocks every day. You know how nice it is doing due diligence when the information you find is current? Yeah, real easy. Problem here is, is that Mullen, ticker M-U-L-N, is not an OTC stock. She's on the NASDAQ. However, we're going to start here and work out. Now, Net Element is not the name of this company. The name of the company is Mullen Automotive. They just haven't changed this yet. Mullen did a reverse merger with this company back in November, and things are still catching up paperwork-wise, if you will. And I'm going to get into that more after we look at some basic information here. So, I did see the price rise today. It was a good jump. And I should have had this video out just one day earlier, right? So what was the relative volume today? What a bump. She went from 57 million, that's her daily average, which isn't bad at all, up to 307 million. Nice bump. Share structure. No, 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 that's not right. I, I saw this here and I went to look for the float and saw this information was not up to date at all. The outstanding shares seem to be approximately 330 million and the float seems to be somewhere near 220. Not super high, not super low, just an average float. Financials, we're not gonna see any revenues right now. This is a pre-revenue company. They are getting a lot of things in place. They just came on board and it looks really good to me. Now, the company does have money. They got $64 million sitting in the coffers right now. However, last quarter, they did go through $30 million. And that seems to be a concern to a lot of other investors. That is one heck of a burn rate. But after looking at the financials, it seems to me that there was a lot of big payments, one-time payments for equipment and leases and taking care of the mergers and stuff like that. That's not going to reoccur in this quarter. So I don't think they're going to have a continued burn rate of $30 million every quarter. If so, yeah, we might be in trouble. However, to me, it looks good. They've got money in the coffers and I think that burn rate is going to fall. Time will tell. Now, there is one disclosure I want to share with you over here, simply because it's curious. I mean, I'm trying to show you the bad and the good. This is a Form 4. A Form 4 is filed whenever insiders, the management, buy or sell common stock on the market. Well, the CEO, the president, David here, he sold about 750,000 shares. Though he does have all, almost 8 million, he did sell three quarter million dollars worth of shares. Now maybe he had some hospital bills to pay or wanted to go on vacation or needed some new golf clubs. I don't know. But in either case, he did just sell here on the 25th. And then you have their 10Q, which came out here just a couple weeks ago and I did go through and there's lots of information. So if you're really interested in the company, it's just easier to open up the 10Q and read what they got. You can go by the numbers and just read the paragraphs. They've got it laid out very nicely and you can get the entire history of the company right up until now. So now let's take a look at who the company is and what they do. This is Mullen Technologies, Inc. They're a California-based company. They were established back in 2002. And in November of last year, they did a spin-out of their EV division called Mullen Automotive. It was on November 5th that they listed on the NASDAQ by way of a reverse merger with Net Element Inc. Back then, their ticker was N-E-T-E. This was a clean shell company. They owned the ticker, and they were looking for a deal just like this. Now, Mullins isn't actually new to the EV game. One of their first companies they bought was Coda. If you go back to 2009, 2010, there were basically only three production EVs in the market at the time. There was the Nissan Leaf, the Tesla Roadster, 
and then there was Coda. Not as pretty as the other two. Now, Coda sold a couple thousand vehicles in the market, and then they went out of business. But what happened was that the CEO bought Coda out of bankruptcy. Not only did they acquire the assets in the manufacturing facility in California, but more importantly, they gained access to the California EV manufacturing license as well. Now, at the same time the reverse merger was taking place, the company also took control of another facility. This one covers 127,000 square feet and was specifically designed and built for an EV manufacturing company. It sits on 100 acres in Tunica, Mississippi, which is only 50 miles south of Memphis, Tennessee, and it's ready to use right now. And as you can see, they have lots of room to expand, which currently is on their agenda. They have plans to to immediately begin expansion to add an additional 1.2 million square feet to the facility. This to hasten their cargo van fleet orders, which I'm going to touch on to more here in just a few minutes. The company's main focus is to build a sexy, very strong performance-based vehicle at an affordable price and do it 100% here in America. So let's take a quick look at the company's vehicle lineup. Right now, the company has three types of vehicles that they're introducing to the public. First, the Mullen 5. It was on November 17th, 2021, <laughs> my birthday, at the Los Angeles International Auto Show that the company debuted their signature series EV crossover SUV for the very first time, the Mullen 5. The reveal was so popular that the company increased its pre-order reservations from 5,000 to 25,000. And you can reserve a car too for just a mere hundred dollars they'll make you a car oh and if you change your mind they'll give you your hundred dollars back now a few things we can say about the car because there's a lot we could talk about first off the car did win top suv zevas award at the la auto show mullen 5 was their top rated vehicle with a full charge, the Mullen 5 can go as far as 325 miles and it will accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 3.2 seconds. And they boast of a fast charge from 0 to 80% in only 21 minutes and you'll get about 260 miles out of that. The car comes with a dual motor configuration that allows all-wheel drive and a top speed electronically limited to 155 miles per hour with about 220 horsepower. The car comes with four huge Pirelli P0 tires and advanced driver assist system. Now the interior of the SUV is sleek and clean. You're not gonna find any buttons or even handles. All of the car's infotainment comes through touch control or voice control. And not only is there a digital display and central infotainment screen for the driver, but also a tablet style screen for the rear passengers as well. And the list of luxurious as well as curious features about this car just keeps going on and on. Now they have made mention of a second version of the Mullen 5 they call the RS. They tell us that the Mullen Automotive is going to showcase a high-performance EV, the Mullen 5 RS, in the company's strikingly different U.S. test drive tour, which is coming here soon. The EV model features close to 1,100 horsepower and acceleration of 0 to 60 miles per hour in just under 2 seconds and a top speed of nearly 200 miles per hour. So they feel that just that in itself is going to make this car stand out. But I believe there is another feature that's going to make the entire line of vehicles far superior than all of their competitors. Let's take a look at that second vehicle. This is the Dragonfly. The Dragonfly is a sporty four-wheel drive. It accelerates from 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds with a top electronically limited speed of 155 miles an hour and they have a range of 230 miles. Now, this car as it is is not yet available in the US. However, the Mullins Dragonfly is already on the roads in China under the name Quintanto K50. Though there is a rumor of a version called K20 being released here in the USA 2022. And finally, the not so sparkly, but very practical and popular Mullen One Cargo EV Vans. 
Now, in truth, these are actually the first products that they are going to be delivering on. They're launching two versions, the Class 1 and the Class 2 commercial van. Both are real-wheel drive vehicles, and basically the Class 2 is just twice as big as the Class 1 when it comes to cargo and space. Now, like the Mullen 5, they are built on a skateboard chassis. That is the bottom half of the car or van. And that bottom half can be utilized to create a variety of different types of vehicles and styles to suit whatever the customers may need. Now, the company already has fleet orders on the books. So with regard to that fleet order, they came out with a press release here in August of last year. They tell us that the company has entered into a letter of agreement with Height Dispensary to purchase 1,200 Mullen One electric vans and has selected Mullen as its exclusive provider for electric vehicles. The total vehicle purchase order is valued at over $60 million. Heights is a Texas company specializing in high quality legal CBD and THC8 products online and soon through retail cannabis dispensary. Now they've got two orders. Their first initial order is for 200 of these vans. Those are to be delivered on or before the end of the third quarter of 2023. Their additional order of 1,000 vans is supposed to be delivered by the second quarter of 2025. Now in response to this, the company in September went and made another deal. They entered into a definitive agreement with Tang Long Automotive, a subsidiary of CCRC Group, for the manufacturing, distribution, and retail sales of the cargo vans in the USA and Mexico. The agreement provides Mullen with an effective solution for the fast developing EV cargo van market and its existing EV fleet van orders. Mullen will homologate and assemble the vans at its Advanced Manufacturing and Engineering Facility, AMEC, located in Mississippi. The vehicles will be assembled in the United States and branded assembled in the United States, differentiating it from made in America, which is what will be put on the other cars. They tell us here that we can begin to fulfill existing fleet orders in the first quarter of 2022. Well, maybe they're getting things together. This was last year. They've obviously fallen behind just a wee bit. Uh, this will generate revenue and begin our manufacturing process in Mississippi. We expect to hire a significant number of Americans for the start of production at the AMEC facility. And the company they just hired must obviously have a lot of belief in this company. Now, they could just be saying this, but it sounds pretty sincere. We are very happy to work with our new North American partner, Mullen Technologies. They have a great team, and we know that they will be very successful in this market. We are looking forward to providing the best service and products for the rapidly expanding EV market. Now, the company has made a few other deals that I just want to briefly touch on. So just taking a quick glance at four deals that they made here last year. First two on the screen, Hofer Powertrain and Arc. Both of these are engineering companies out of Germany. Hofer Powertrain develops and produces electric drive motors, and that's exactly what they're going to be doing for Mullen, making the electric motors. Arc, on the other hand, is going to deal with everything else, the ergonomics, the materials to be used. They are a think tank. They're this European company with over 3,000 employees that just fixes problems. So they're going to be taking care of all the rest. The other two deals they did, all of these were last year, with DSA Systems and DER. DSA Systems is a diagnostics online, if you will. They're creating a platform for a smart vehicle grid so they can remotely diagnose and fix cars without actually having mechanics or engineers with your car. And the other deal they got is with Dur, D-U-R-R. -R. This is the company that is going to be working on the expansion of their Mississippi manufacturing facility. That 1.2 million a square feet that they're going to add they have plans to add a paint shop and a whole bunch of other things and this is the company that they have hired to do all of that work so now this is where it starts to get interesting the company made another deal here in march however this had to do with ev battery innovations the company has been working really hard to create a lithium sulfur battery stronger lighter more durable and safe 
They tell us here that Mullen and Nextech are to partner on a lithium sulfur battery technology. The EV manufacturer Mullen Technologies has announced a strategic partnership making Nextech Batteries an EV battery supplier and partner for battery development and technologies. Mullen plans to produce more than 100,000 vehicles over the next five years using Nextech's lithium S pouch format batteries. Nextech says that its battery materials are fully recyclable, sustainable, readily available, and inexpensive. And I'd like to add one more adjective, safe, much safer. Matter of fact, we get some more information over here from the CEO himself, David. He was in an interview here and he does discuss the batteries and that's the only part I'm gonna focus in on here because it is relevant. And I'm quoting him now. We're in the process of filing patents in the US right now for that solid state polymer battery technology. So we're gonna be as vague as possible but I can give you information that has been already publicly disclosed. And with some of the results and findings, it's a tremendous opportunity to change the landscape of the battery field with technology that reduces the cost, reduces the dangerous materials used to produce the cell, as well as increase its efficiency by two-fold. That's right, doubling its efficiency. And then they go on to brag about the degradation. Your basic lithium ion battery that's in all the EV cars right now. After 10,000 charges, 80% of the battery is dead. There's only 20% of it left. The new batteries under the same 10,000 cycle recharge, less than 2% degradation. They say that's nil. They literally say that is basically nothing. Then they go on to tell us how safe this is. You can literally take a blowtorch, a flame, put it up against these batteries and it just burns a hole through it. No big deal. Try that on a lithium battery, you're gonna have a fire that burns for days and days. And here's something I did not know. They tell us that you can take these new batteries, submerge them into salt water, pull them out and use them. No problem. They say if you submerge a lithium ion battery, you're gonna have a fire that you cannot put out. I guess they're not using these batteries on boats on the ocean yet, are they? And they're easy to dispose of. There's no dangerous stuff inside these batteries. They're primarily made with lithium and sulfur, and the sulfur they're actually getting as a byproduct from processing oil into fuels. It's just a byproduct that they can use for their batteries. So the batteries cost less to make, about half. They are a lot lighter in weight. So they're gonna be able to double the size of the battery from a 75 to 150 kilowatt battery, giving you now 600 mile range with the same weight car. So you're gonna double your range. No other car is gonna be able to do that. They're all at about 300, 330. This is gonna be able to do 600 miles per charge with these new batteries. Folks, I think that's a game changer, a big game changer. Made in America, assembled in America, factory in America, and 600 miles, uh, yeah. <laughs> now there's a little more information here I wanna tag on to just to keep you in the loop. They tell us here that Mullen has now come out with an announcement that it plans to assemble its own battery packs at its current research and development facility in California. The facility was originally established by a failed EV startup, Coda. Mullen purchased the assets of Coda in 2014 and took over the facility in 2017. Mullen will use the facility to assemble battery packs not only for the five crossover, but also for the planned cargo van and sports car. The sports car known as the Dragonfly is a version of the Quinto K50, which was revealed in 2016 and currently on sale in China. Building our own battery packs just makes sense as it reduces our reliance on third-party suppliers and lessens our risk of being subjected to the waves of supply and critical component shortages. Mullen also plans to assemble vehicles in the U.S. The company last year acquired a plant in Mississippi where it plans to start production of its cargo van known as the One later this year. The company will eventually add production of the Five crossover at the plant in 2024. Mullen has previously said it will also import the Dragonfly sports car from China as well.
So just real quickly, before we go look at the chart, I want to give you both sides of the coin here. There are two ways of looking at this stock. Mullen Automotive stock could be this year's multi-bagger EV investment. Or, despite its low price, there's still big downside risk in Mullen Automotive. Well, the fact of the matter is I did cover the downside risk that he's talking about here. The price has dropped over 90%. It hit a high of over $15 just a few short months ago. And it's been dipping under a dollar off and on here for the last couple of weeks. And under a dollar is a dangerous place for a NASDAQ stock. You can't stay there too long. If you do, you get a warning. They give you six months to get over a dollar and you got to stay over a dollar for 10 days straight. So they have been up and down, up and down. So that is a worry. However, it can get up there. As I saw today, it started moving very quickly. So I'm really not worried about the price drop. They're also worried about the cash burn. $30 million they spent the last quarter. Well, as I told you, a lot of those payments were huge one-off payments. I don't anticipate them to be reoccurring quarter after quarter. So I don't see that as a problem. Me, myself, I see this as a multi-bagger. Yes, I do. I think that $15 price is just the start. They've got factories in America, one in California, one in Mississippi. The one in California may be able to make benefit of tax credits. Don't know yet. They have fleet orders already on the books. They have pre-orders already on the books for their five. There's lots going on right now, and they're heading in the right direction. Do they need money? Yes, they need money. But do they look good? Sure they do. And I think some investors are going to step up. I don't mean guys like me and you. I mean big whales. I think somebody's going to step up and say, you know what? Tesla needs a competitor and there's not a lot of them in America, right? So this company could do something explosive really. And put that new battery into these cars, go 600 miles on a charge. Who can touch that? All right, let's go take a look at that chart now. We're taking a look at Mullen, ticker M-L-U-N, on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform. I got it just for signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. So can you. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open, and you can use this just like I am. So this is M-U-L-N, a six-month, four-hour chart. We got a high bubble here of $16.49 and a low, wow, I didn't know it got that low, of 50 cents. This high was hit during the reverse merger. This is just at the end of October into November when everything was happening. A lot of activity, ups and downs, but mostly down. She did get over the 200 here last month for the whole month and then fell away again. And today, she has grabbed a lot of enthusiasm and power and is touching the 200 right now. Technicals look strong, but we can see a wee bit of a pullback. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she was under the 200. She poked it once, had a strong fall away after hitting that 200, hit another low in this time period of 75 cents. Obviously extreme because the bounce off of it was very extreme. Went from 75 cents up to $1.25, just over the next three days. Hit that 200-day SMA and hugged it. Did not want to fall down, and today it just launched itself. Look at the volume today, and I'm not quite sure why there was extra volume today. My video didn't get out there in time, so it had to be something else. Again, the technicals look real strong, but we do see the pullback as the price fell. Let's take a look at that five-day, five-minute view. So she wasn't doing a whole lot here for the last five days until today, and she took off early. Started her leap and bounds at 8.30 in the morning. So she was down here. I'm going to draw a line where the surge started and a line where the surge ends at the high. And I'm going to split this right down the middle. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if this goes up to its high point and falls back and keeps 50% of its gains, that's okay. I'm comfortable with it. long as it doesn't fall below this. Because if it falls below, chances are it's going to keep falling. If it stays above, there's a stronger likelihood it's going to hold its gains and continue climbing. Not a guarantee, just more probability in our favor. So even after market today, she had a small dip and has started climbing and is hanging around the 50-day SMA, which isn't bad at all. 
She's holding on to her gains on a strong SMA. Uh, we have a crossover, looks like right now, a negative crossover occurring on the MACD. The RSI, just under 60, isn't bad, but the CCI is falling, pointing down under the neutral, going towards the red. Looks like she actually wants to fall. But looking at the long chart, folks, I see this as recovering. The company's got a lot going for it. It just needs to get these things moving. So we're not looking for a momentum play. If you're a momentum trader, you're probably not going to like this stock. It's going to have a lot of volatility, I do believe. There's going to be a lot going on in the world, in the market, in the market of EVs. However, in my long-range view, I think this company's going to come out on top. There was a lot of ups and downs with Tesla, and people hung it out. And look where they're at now. So I would do some more DD, folks. There's a lot more information out there. Definitely go through that 10K, 10Q that just came out. It is packed, just fully loaded with information, easy to read, headlined, so you'll know what you want to read and what you don't want to read. Even use a search. Use keywords and find things instead of just having to scroll through it. I really, really like this company, folks. I think Mullen is going to grow and be a very big company in the USA. I think Tesla has got some competition now. Tesla just has a huge head start. So if you got to pick an EV company, you might want to look at Mullen. I know I am. I like American Made. I like the fact that they're probably going to be coming out with the battery that they're going to be producing and putting into their own vehicles, increasing their range to six hundred miles i think american made in a 600 mile range is great i think they do need money i think it's going to be volatile i think there's going to be some bumps in the road but do i think it's at a good price absolutely a great price right now folks is it going to dip maybe it'll dip pick up some more cheaper remember never buy everything you want all at once give the stock room to breathe it may come down one day and if you only bought 20 percent you'll be able to get 20 percent more at a much better price but in the long run two three four five years down the road i don't know folks i expect this to be a huge stock well over a hundred dollars that's my impression i can't guarantee anything do your own homework see what you feel about it remember the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.